Hi. Did you ever wanted to know what SAP EWM has to do with the famous Oktoberfest in Germany? This video about the task interleaving process will give you the answer to this question. This is one uh, video of our series called Understand SAP EWM where we are trying to explain processes, functionalities and features of EWM in a simple and understandable way. As usual, um, the disclaimer which is mentioned on wmexperts.online is also valid for all content which is published in and around this video. That's it for the beginning and you can just relax, lean back and soak up EWM knowledge um, as usual. Have fun! Germany is famous for its Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest is a big festival where people are basically sitting in big party tents the whole day trying to eat and drink as much as they can. Traditional German music, which is being performed within these tents, makes the people feel like having to drink even more. In order to deliver all these drinks and all the food to the tables within the tents, you need a team of strong waiters and waitresses. In order to make the most of their time, you need an efficient organization. If you ever had the chance to observe the scenery within these party tents, you might have noticed that the waiters are usually not taking any step with empty hands. A typical scenario might look something like this. The waiter carries full mugs from the bar to table X. Having placed the mugs, he takes the empty ones, if available, and brings them back to the bar. Again, he picks up full mugs and carries them to table Y. Table Y has no empty mugs. The guests have just arrived. But our waiter is passing table Z, where lots of empty mugs are waiting to be picked up. Side note, the world record for carrying these traditional 1-liter mugs is held by a guy called Strümpfe. Last year, he carried 29 of those mugs at a time for a distance of 40 meters. Anyway, we think you already got the idea, but let us draw the line to SAP EWM together. Imagine a simple warehouse, pallet in, pallet out. The operators are driving forklifts while using RF scanners to confirm their tasks. Our party tables are now the bins in a high base storage, and our bar is the staging area where the pallets are received and shipped. We now only have two core processes, put away of full pallets to the rack and removal of full pallets from the rack. The staging area is shared for inbound and outbound staging. We are using two queues only, one for put away and one for removal. Both queues have a queue type assigned. We will come to this soon. We are using resource types, which are activated for the task interleaving process. The queues are assigned to resource groups. The resource groups and the resource types are assigned to the resources. As mentioned already, the two queues are also assigned to different queue types, and we have to find a sequence for these types based on the resource group. So we do not only have to define a sequence for the queues within the given resource group, which we would need for a simple system-guided RF processing with multiple queues, but we also have to define a sequence for the different types of queues. This queue type sequence makes sure that the resources which are operating within the respective resource groups will always get the subsequent task from a queue with queue type B once they've completed a task in a queue of type A. In EWM standard, the selection of the warehouse task from the subsequent queue is based on the latest start date, so-called LSD, and the travel distance. The LSD is calculated based on the times from the wave template and the expected processing time. The travel distance is calculated based on the coordinates of the bins or storage type edges. The sorting can be influenced by body, but we will neither go into how the standard is calculating nor do we look at the body option. We will keep focusing on the basic understanding. The queue for put away is set up to be semi-system guided. Thus, the operator is guided to the receiving bin on the staging area and is free to scan any of the HUs which are sitting there. Would be annoying to ask for a specific one as there are maybe hundreds on the same bin. Once the operator has selected an HU, the system will show the destination bin on the RF screen. The queue for stock removal is not set up as semi-system guided, so the system will show warehouse task for a specific bin and source HU. If you now compare all the system-related stuff with our example process from the Oktoberfest, you will notice that there are not many differences. Oktoberfest waiters are also working in two queues. One to deliver full mugs to empty tables, similar like incoming pallets have to be put away to empty bins, and one to move empty mugs to the bar. 
Similar light outgoing pallets have to be removed from the bins and placed to the outbound staging area. The queue to deliver full mugs to the table, the counterpart of the put-away queue, is semi-system guided and the tasks are created with generic destination, based on the destination table types. That means that the waiters can grab any full mug from the bar and can decide to which table they are going to deliver it. Usually they will pick one where somebody is crying for more. If multiple guests are crying, usually the table with the best tipper. The queue to remove empty mugs, our counterpart of the pallet removal queue, is also semi-system guided. So here's a small point why we have a difference to our warehouse example. The waiter can take any empty mug from any of the tables. The warehouse operator is guided to remove a specific HU. Still, we could argue that we have some kind of built-in guidance, or at least a sorting in our mug process, as the number of empty mugs provides a good visibility of the urgency to head for a specific table. So the table with the most empty mugs is at the top of the empty mug removal queue. The queue determination for the empty mug queue is based on the source tables. In those party tents, usually one waiter is responsible for a fixed set of tables, his activity area. But this is a topic we might look into with a separate video. So in summary, and as you can see, it is almost the same thing. In Germany, we call it Oktoberfest. In EWM, we call it task interleaving. Thank you, Inga. Just uh, some quick words to close this video. As usual, I put you some uh, links right below this video where you will find helpful um, content to improve your theoretical knowledge in this area. As usual, I recommend practical experiences. Um, so jump into the projects and um, learn by doing. And um, yeah, if you are interested in um, videos about other topics, would appreciate to get a comment from you, suggest a, a topic, a feature that we um, should explain in a simple and easy way. And if you want to be notified about new videos, you can subscribe to our channel somewhere here and um, you always get the uh, latest stuff that we publish. So thanks for now and um, hope to see you back in one of our next videos or uh, on our website where we also have a lot of other content about SAP EWM. Thanks and bye.